Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to a rather chilly but beautiful still evening in Lancashire, and more importantly, part two of my recent video all about composition. Now, those of you that haven't seen the last video, I suggest you stop this one here and go and watch that last video first. Now, those of you that saw the video, um, you'll already know that this part is all about the corrections that I made to several compositions during that last video. So I'm going to get myself comfortable and I will join you in just a second where I will talk you through that first image very, very briefly once again. So the reason I wanted to come to this particular little spot is that as a kingfisher often commutes along this watercourse um, where it goes to a nest site downstream and, and fishes in a little spot just upstream and uh, there is a chance that I may well catch it as it zooms down the watercourse. If I keep my voice down it'll come around the corner it won't expect me and it won't have time to react and it will hopefully catch it on the camera. That's, that's the million to one plan at least. So the first image that I took was a sycamore leaf uh, that had some fern fronds over the top of it and round the outside there was a number of sycamore seedlings and basically quite a cluttered composition deliberately of course and um, the idea being that I encourage you to go away and have a think about how that could be improved um, the Facebook page where I posted the images my, my Facebook page Simon Booth Photography some really good responses to those images and some of you were very very close to the compositions that I actually went on then to to complete and photograph which you're just about to see so I will just briefly put the the sycamore shot on that I took um, th that you saw me take and, and present in the last video just quickly just so you can refresh your, your memory of that shot and then you'll see me taking the improved version, so I'll see you in just a second. So the real main problem with this is, for one, I'm far too far out with the camera. I need to be a lot lower down and start to eliminate uh, a lot of the distractions that are in the shot. The first well, I'm saying the first, there's a multitude of firsts, they're all, they're all firsts in my opinion. There's, there's bracken fronds here on the right hand side that's catching the light. There's ones directly over the leaf itself, a little bit of a stalk there. And then you've got all the new, the new sycamore seedlings dotted all around. And you could argue that they add a little bit of colour, the way that they're dotted around, um, but in the, certainly the way that I've taken it, they're, they're going to be out of focus, but I just don't think they add any real value to, to the shot. To include those would, would mean incorporating a lot of the other messy elements around, around the, uh, the leaf. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera right down and focus in on just the, the important parts, which is the leaf and the frond itself, and exclude all those distractions that uh, that are strewn all around it. So this was the final position that I arrived at. You can see now that the camera is an awful lot closer to the subject. We're talking probably nine inches, something like that. This has allowed me to eliminate all the sycamore seeds and I'm, I'm in so close now that you can't see the edges of the leaf. So. Um, I've removed all the parts of the scene that aren't adding any value to it. Um, I've also spun the camera around um, to a, a more pleasing position because um, the image isn't really now just about the sycamore leaf, it's about the, 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 the little fern frond as well. Um, I've turned the camera around so that the, the fern frond comes in from a complementary part of the scene. The actual angle of the sycamore leaf now, the way that the, 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 ed, the ends of the leaf tips are facing, isn't as crucial because they're not in the scene. However, uh, I have had to pay some close attention to the way that the sycamore leaf veins run and that they, they complement the angle of the fern leaf coming in. Um, so now that I've done all that, 
the distractions are all, all gone. I've been able to focus on the fine tuning of the composition with those veins in relation to the, um, to the fern frond. There is a little bit of juxtaposition um, between the two, but um, I quite like that bit of tension that that creates. So there's not a lot else um, to say. Um, if I was to be really critical about the final shot is that just where the, where the fern frond exits um, the, the frame, there's quite a lot of darkening to the area um, where the, the, the sycamore leaf underneath has started to rot down and it, it, the colour blends into the fern frond. But what I'll probably do in post-processing, which often works with this type of shot, is I'll put a vignette around the whole um, of the shot uh, and I will probably not darken it quite so much over that area so that the whole image has more of an even uh, feel to the lighting. So I'll put that shot on now. In the end, I decided against adding the vignette in post-processing. My main reason for this is that the frond is not really a central feature that is detached from the edges and as such, I want the viewer to see the whole of it rather than just being drawn to the centre part of the frame. I also felt that an even distribution of light across the frame was much better in this instance. I have however still brightened that dark corner in the top right as I suggested that I would in the film. Adding to the points already mentioned, I really love the colours in this image. There is a rusty colour theme throughout the image which you can see in the fern and also in the veins of the sycamore leaf which contrasts beautifully with the silvery tones of the other parts of the leaf. By eliminating all the distractions around the edges of the frame, the image is left much simpler in terms of composition and colour harmony. So I think you'll all agree that that was vastly improved, much tidier and better for it. So the second shot that I took was uh, I was forced into a woodland because the rain came and no sooner had I walked into the woodland that I came across a, a fallen log with some squirrel feeding uh, remains on one side and some lovely patterning on the log and I went on to photograph the squirrel remains and the log in its entirety. Um, so I'm going to put that on again now so you can refresh your mind over that and then I will go on and, and put the actual sequence of me taking the shot and I will see you back here again in just a minute. Right, so I've gone in a lot closer just like I did on the, the other shot that I took. Um, you often, or you, you, you may have heard the term, when you think you're close enough, go in a bit closer. And very often when I'm doing my sequencing on my videos and I do um, the close-up reveal and, and the, I get the video to pan across the image so you can see the detail, I very often see images within images. And, uh, and that's sort of reinforced the need to look closer when I'm when I'm creating an image and the problem with this was you get too fixated on too many things and the squirrel seeds that uh, squirrel um, remains the feeding remains I wanted to include that in the shot and that's something that, that is often done trying to include too many elements um, the other problem was shooting on top I had the white um, silvery band of the reflected light and uh, yes, I could, I could deal with that in post by doing a, a blend of two images, but it's just not ideal. And the other thing with that shot is it you saw the top and bottom of the log. You saw the, you know, the under, underside of the log and the top part of it. And uh, 
it was very very representational um that's my camera just the, the mirror flicking back up um you probably hear that quite a lot on my videos um whereas with this shot that i've got lined up now it's more of an abstract it makes you think you don't really know what you're looking at um, it's more compelling and and it's more dare i say the word more artistic um, by comparison to the representative shot and uh, much more pleasing on the eye and the way that I've arranged the composition is to make sure that the shapes within the, the shot are nice and balanced and even and complement each other and that includes the light and dark tones, the colours now I did put polarizer on in this instance because the top part of the, the, the shot is still a little bit damp. It's stopped raining now fortunately, but it's still a bit damp and that was just catching the light uh, ever so slightly. The fact that I've gone lower has, has made it a lot better than being on top looking directly down where you get that glare um, down on the surface of the wet, the wet trunk. Whereas down on the side I'm only really catching the, the very very top part and the polarizer has dealt with that. So this is a shot at f16, um, 100 ISO, nice and simple and um, yeah not a lot else to say really I will put that shot on now. Don't feel forced to compose images just because there are lots of interesting things going on in the scene. Less is so often more and it's certainly true here. I composed the first shot based on my natural reaction to what my eyes were immediately drawn to as I walked in the wood. Taking a step back and thinking more in terms of creating images that are less representational and more unusual, I was able to create an image that makes the viewer think. Whilst the original shot does have a story to tell about the feeding habits of squirrels, it doesn't really make for a great image and no amount of adjusting the composition changes any of that. Ignoring the need to include the feeding evidence and reframing on the interesting shapes and colours of the wood alone has made for a much more pleasing and artistic image. So I think you'll all agree absolutely 100% that the, the image is far better for leaving out those squirrel remains and just focusing on those lovely patterns um, that the log provided me with. Um, now the third and final image again I'll just show you in just a second um, before I put the sequence on was an oak leaf with some little moss spikes peeking through two little holes and again I encompass the entire leaf and I think you can tell there's a bit of a theme developing here. Um, it was very untidy around the edges and a lot of people had some fairly close guesses on the Facebook page as to what um, I might have done with that from different orientations, slight crops and various other ideas but uh, as you see, as you'll see um, in just a second um, what I ended up with was hugely different than what I showed on the last video. So again, I will show you the, the picture that I took last week first and then go on to the final sequence. So I've completely realigned um, the camera. It's now, you noticed before on the previous shot, the camera was angled ever so slightly and I mentioned it before about the centre plane being parallel to the subject. Um, before it was more and um, the centre plane of the back of the camera was like that and the subject was like that. So you need to get it more in line with what I've got now. And uh, so it's directly over the top and that means that depth of field is, is not a huge problem and you don't have to um, necessarily always focus stack or, or maybe you only need to do a few focus stacks whereas if the, if the back of the camera is like that and the subject's like that you're going to have to do a lot of focus stacking all the way through the image whereas you're certainly minimising the need to do as much of that when you're directly over the top. Um, I've excluded a lot of the distractions and just focused on the, uh, 
the middle part of the leaf where those two little bits of interest, um, those points of interest are showing. So I shall uh, put that image on now. As with the first shot, this image is made what it is by going in close and removing all the parts of the original frame that didn't add any value. Simplifying the scene to fewer elements has made the image much easier on the eye and allows you to concentrate on the strength of the composition. Again we have gone from representation of the woodland floor to an image that is all about composition and form. The main strength here I feel is the composition. The strong diagonal line of the midrib of the leaf intersects the two moss tips growing through the holes on the opposing diagonal and again we have reduced the image to just two contrasting colours. Well, I've been here for quite a while now and sadly no kingfisher I'm afraid, not even heard one. The sun is setting and it's getting a little bit chilly out here so I'm going to get going. Um, let me know if you've enjoyed this style of video and whether you'd like to see more like it um, and also the improved versions of the images let me know in the comments below what you thought of those. If you want to see them in more detail head over to my Facebook page Simon Booth Photography where I'll post those in the next couple of days. I'm going to leave it there now and say thank you all so much for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. So until next time, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.